spirituality. Years ago, theologians talked about sin as an alienation from God. Alienation from our spirituality allows us to commit all manner of destructions on ourselves, other people, and the environment. Alienation from God is an alienation from ourselves. Addictions are necessary for us to deal with the pain and to achieve a level of pseudo-functioning when we are alienated from our spirituality. A new paradigm must, by necessity, be one that facilitates our reconnection with our spirituality. In the new paradigm, there is a recognition and an assumption that we are spiritual beings. This assumption accepts the reality that we are, by nature, connected with what we have called God and all of creation. It is through our addictions that we shut off this awareness and alienate ourselves from this natural oneness. We do not need to have this connection controlled by anyone or anything else. It exists. It is just that simple. We and our acceptance of alienating forces and belief systems external to ourselves are what alienate us from our spiritual connection. It is not that the connection does not already exist. I am often shocked and appalled at the reaction to this new scientific thinking by some Christian groups. I have a good friend who is a very good person and who belongs to a fundamentalist, charismatic Christian group. We often dined together, shared stories about our kids who grew up together, and talked about life and times. One night, he was having dinner at my house, and our family was discussing our excitement that my latest book had made the cover of New Age magazine. He was shocked, and essentially, I have not seen him since. His church teaches that all New Age ideas are of the devil and to be avoided at all costs. The role of the Catholic Church is even more interesting. Not only did they temporarily silence a remarkable theologian like Matthew Fox for his suggestion of a positive creation theology, but they continue to see any growth in per personal spirituality as a threat to Christianity, which has somehow been equated with the Church. In fact, as I write this, a group of former therapists who have trained with me and are working with people to help them move toward recovery and living in process are under an inquisition by their Catholic bishop. Certainly, as we see the historic involvement of the church in the initiation and propagation of the modernist, mechanistic, scientific paradigm, this kind of reaction is not surprising. The issue that is being raised is not one of theo theology, spirituality, God, or even one's relationship with God. The issue being raised is one of manipulation and control. The issue being raised is one addressed by Martin Luther long ago. It is an issue of spiritual dependency. The church needs the human race to be spiritually dependent upon it to ensure its survival. I have studied with many of the great theologians of our time, Niebuhr, Buber, Tillich, Brown, and Castile. I have studied the Old and New Testaments, and I find nothing in the new scientific paradigm that contradicts the teachings of the Old or New Testament. What I do find, however, are ideas and knowledge that threaten the political control of the church. As I study the history of the mechanistic scientific worldview, I can see what an investment the church has made politically in this worldview. A living process paradigm offers the possibility of realizing the promises that Jesus and all the other great spiritual teachers have offered. Can the church, like any other addict, afford to put its personal illusion of control, self-centeredness, dualism, dishonesty, and distorted thinking above spirituality? I hope not. When I think about it, I should not be so surprised and hurt by the reaction of the church. I have seen the same thing in the field of psychology. I am dismayed at the way some therapists cling to a mechanistic belief system 
and the illusion of control. But I have come to realize that this mechanistic scientific worldview is not just a science or a technology for some people. It is a religious belief system, and there has been more violence on this planet in support of religious belief systems than in any other one cause. There is a progression that takes place in a belief system in an, addic in an addictive system. One moves from experience to belief, from belief to theory, explanation, from theory to dogma, and from dogma to fanaticism. I am seeing this movement in many sectors of society. Of course, this progression leads to a closed system and an inability to utilize those aspects of the human brain that Frank suggests are fully human. The system that is built on the illusion of control is being seriously challenged, and it does not die easily. I find it sad that a positive, life-giving spirituality very much attuned to all the great spiritual teachings with the potential to move us beyond the religions that our addictive minds have constructed is presenting itself to us and we are not greeting it with open arms unfortunately such is the legacy of a static mechanistic reductionist controlled worldview if we fully participate in our lives our spirituality comes alive <laughs>